Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video in intermolecular forces. Bam! So today we're talking about intermolecular forces in an ion dipole. So here, right here, is a water molecule. That is the oxygen in the red. The hydrogens are in the white. The gray are the bonding pair of electrons, and the lone pair of electrons are those tan things. Here's another representation of the water molecule, and I've labeled it for you with the whites as the hydrogens, the red as the oxygen. Okay, this is water, H2O. Okay, I've labeled this as the delta positives at the um, hydrogens. That is, there's a drawing of electrons with the most electronegative element, that is the oxygen, that's why it gets the delta negative. And you can draw what's called a dipole moment here um, from the hydrogens to the oxygen, where the lone pair of electrons are. The negative end, that is the point of the arrow, is towards the delta negative, and that is the, that is the dipole moment. Okay, that means this molecule is asymmetrical and polar. Okay, here is sodium chloride here, and I've ripped off a sodium and a chloride ion, respectively. There's a chloride, there is a sodium ion. Okay, and now I've attached some water molecules to this sodium chloride. Okay, so sodium chloride aqueous, that means that the sodium chloride is in solution, which means it's in water. Okay, so the negative dipole of water will interact with the sodium ion, okay, that is a cation of a positive charge, okay, and the positive dipole of water will interact with the chloride ion, and that is the anion. So I want you to notice that right there, that the chloride is in the green, and that's, it's negatively charged, and that's why the positive end of the water molecule i.e. the white hydrogen is attached to the chloride. Whereas the blue sodium ion ha is a cation, it's positively charged, and the red oxygen that is delta negatively charged is attached to that. Okay, the polar water molecule will selectively remove the ions of the crystalline salt to give a hydrated ions that are surrounded by water molecules. So we're gonna show you what that looks like. Okay, and um, those are just one water molecule interacting with the sodium and chloride ion, respectively. Okay, this is a hydride, hydrated sodium ion. So the sodium ion is completely covered up with water molecules, and it is separated from the crystalline structure of sodium chloride. And here is a hydrated chloride ion. And this hydrated chloride ion is completely surrounded by water molecules, both of them three-dimensionally. Okay, you should also see that that hydrated sodium ion that's in blue is hard to see, but all the oxygens are adhering to that chloride, sorry, that sodium ion, which is positively charged. Whereas the chloride ion, which is in the green, which is negatively charged, all the hydrogens are adhering to that. Okay, those are ion dipole interactions that are occurring between the water and the cation or anion respectively. Okay, so the energy associated with the hydration of ions is the solvation energy, or more specifically, ions in water is referred to the enthalpy of hydration. The solvation energy is dependent on Coulomb's law, and we already discussed Coulomb's law. Here is Coulomb's law. Again, it is the force is equal to Coulomb's law constant. Two different point charges, that's Q1 and Q2, divided by the distance squared between those point charges. Okay, so that's one ion charge, and here is the second ion charge. And in this case, it's a water molecule, so it would be the magnitude of the dipole itself. Water has a very large dipole. Okay, the distance between the ion and the dipole is the D. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. We've got a magnesium ion, and that's 86 picometers in size. Okay, then we have a sodium ion, and that's 116 picometers in size. The sodium ion is larger, of course, because it's group one, okay, and magnesium is smaller. And it's group two, and the magnesium is a little bit to the right within the same period. That's why it's smaller. OK, 
okay, a greater effective nuclear charge for that magnesium ion. Okay, and then we have the cesium ion, which is in group one, but it is far down within that group, and that's why it's very large, because it has very many electron shells on it, and that's 181 picometers in size. So we're going to take a look at water molecules to interact with all these ions. Now, one of the things that is being held constant here is that all of these are interacting with water. The other thing that is being held constant is that all these are cations, but you can apply this to anions just as well. So here's a water molecule interacting with that magnesium ion. Here's a water molecule interacting with the sodium ion. And here's a water molecule interacting with the cesium ion. Now notice that I have included in this a relative distance between the water molecule and the cations respectively. And that is because magnesium ion is very highly charged, that's a two plus charge, and it's very small, that means that the water molecule can get very close to it. That's why there's only two little uh, uh, blue dots there. Whereas the sodium is not nearly as highly charged, it only has a one plus charge, and it's a larger ion, therefore that water molecule is farther away, that distance is much greater. And the cesium ion, its distance is much, much larger because the cesium ion is huge in comparison to sodium or magnesium, okay? And that's why there are more dots there, okay? These are the corresponding values, okay, that you could get for Coulomb's law, okay? They're negative values. This is the solvation energy values, okay? And that greater number, that one for the magnesium ion, is showing you that this corresponds to Coulomb's law, okay? So, if you take a metal ion and you hydrate it, you can get some metal ions that are hydrated metal ions. And some of these are actual solids um, with water molecules incorporated into them, and they're solid. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of which I have in the lab here, and that's this is cobalt 2, or cobaltus hexahydrate, and it's a solid. It's this beautiful color right there. And then I also have copper 2, that's uh, cuparic, and it's a pentahydrate, and that's that blue to, beautiful blue color that you see right there. Okay, so these are hydrated metal ions. All right, that's another crazy hat video from the crazy hat chemist. And I got a wizardly hat here for you today. If you enjoyed that video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need more subscribers. And have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye now.